Hi, I'm John and welcome to my workbench. Today I'm going to replace the lead jacks on this Heathkit IM18 VTVM. This unit came equipped with a headphone type jack and I'll be swapping that out today for some banana jack connectors. The parts you'll need to do this change yourself are just a single 1 mega ohm resistor, two red insulated banana jack binding posts, and one black non-insulated banana jack binding post. Before we get started, I want to explain a little about the probe on most of these vintage VTVM units. One thing many of them had in common is that their probes were switchable. In other words, there was an actual switch on the probe itself that allowed the technician to switch from AC to DC testing. The only difference between the two was that the DC mode required a resistor to be in series with the positive side of the probe. Many of those probes uh, from these old units were broken or lost during the 50 or so years that they've existed. So it's easier and less expensive to swap over to banana jack leads. If the probe on your VTVM required a resistor, like the one shown here, then you'll need to add that resistor to your new jacks. What I'll be doing today is adding two jacks for the positive side of this VTM and one, uh, one ground jack. One of the positive sides will be for AC and the other positive side will be for DC. I'm going to hardwire the resistor into the jack itself, inside of the case itself, not in the probe. So to move from AC to DC, I'll simply have to move the banana jack to the correct binding post. Here's my VTVM. What I need to do now is take the chassis out of its case. This is the view of the phone jack connector from inside the case. I'll first need to determine which leads on this old jack are positive and which are ground. When the headphone jack slides into this connector, the positive tip of the jack will make contact with this part of the connector. The negative or ground base of the jack will make contact with this part of the connector which is also grounded to the chassis. I use my continuity checker to establish that the bottom ring of this connector is attached to this positive part. So I know that this is my positive lead. On this VTVM there is only one wire attached to this positive ring of the connector. I use my continuity checker again to establish that these three wires are connected to the ground portion of this connector. So I know that these three wires are my ground, as well as the chassis. Now that I know th what all these wires are, I can disconnect this old switch and desolder the wires from it. Here I've added the ground, non-insulated binding post to the center hole, where the old jack used to be. I'm using a non-insulated ground connector because it needs to short the chassis on this model. I also measured and drilled two additional holes for the two positive insulated binding posts. And I'm going to use insulated binding posts for the positive side because I don't want that to short out the chassis. Now you can see I've added the two insulated positive binding posts. Those are the two red ones on either side of the middle one. The three wires that were connected to the ground of the old jack are here and now I have them connected to the new ground jack which is shorted to the chassis. Here is the single positive lead that was connected to the old jack. You can see now that I have it connected to both of the positive insulated binding posts. The left side is connected to a 1 mega ohm resistor first which makes that the DC side. All connections are made I took a moment here to download calibrating instructions from the internet and calibrated this machine before putting it back together. Okay, so now we're finished with the project. As you can see we've got a 9-volt uh, battery here plugged in. And we're going to put this on the DC side. Plug that in. And there's our voltage. Take that out voltage drops and there's your new
complete, he's good VTV in. Navy, every Navy.